Hey everybody, Dr. Powers here. We're going to do a video here uh, looking at some of the challenge activities that you'll see in module three. Again, I'm highlighting some of the ones that are a little bit more difficult. Um, and uh, anyway, well, let's just get into it. So this first one, uh, we're trying to, we want to try to determine the slope and the intercept of this, uh, this regression line just based on the graph. Okay, so how are we going to do that? Well, the what I want to first look at is probably the intercept. It's the simplest thing. So the intercept here is going to be found when the um, the x value equals zero. That is, if you look along the the horizontal axis at zero, you look at see where the line. Uh, the height of the line. So here it looks like it's at 500. And now the slope is maybe a little more difficult. We're going to, it's going to be uh, the rise, rise over the run. So we're going to calculate uh, a run of, uh, what we're going to do is look for a couple locations where the, um, where I can really be pretty sure of, of the height of the line. Where is it actually crossing one of these horizontal lines? Like if you look at here at um, when x is equal to one, it's at 600. And when I am at three, it's up here at 800. So what for a run of, of two, that's um, I, oh, it's three minus one equals two. Uh, I have a rise of 800 minus 600. That's 200. So this is, so in other words, it's, it's, 200 divided by 2, the slope is 100. For every one unit across, the line is going up by 100. Okay, it's a rise divided by run. So my equation y, again, I don't have the, the hat, so I'm going to just write y hat equals um, 500 plus 100x. That's going to be my linear regression uh, equation. And to interpret it, so this is, this is, uh, this the situation that I've come up with is you have some high-end bike manufacturers they're making really high-end bicycles and uh, any day they they'll complete a certain number of bikes maybe they'll partially complete some of the bikes so uh, what you have is um, it looks like the the costs of manufacturing the bikes uh, on average 500 plus 100 X Okay, so the slope is going to be uh, the average or expected cost of completing uh, one bike. And the intercept can be, uh, well, depending on whether or not it's, in this case, I would say that's like, that's fixed uh, daily uh, costs. So maybe they've got um, staff and utilities and whatever other kinds of things are built in those are their costs um, yeah so that would be the interpretation now if if the data did not range down to zero then it would be inappropriate to in, interpret the intercept or it, if uh, zero does not make sense as an x value it would be inappropriate to in, interpret the intercept that's not the case here there's actually one day it looks like when they were able to only complete Part, uh, they weren't able to complete any bikes, but there are still some costs. So let's look at some other questions here. If one day they completed five bikes and 80% um, of a sixth bike, in other words, uh, X is 5.8. This is another way of, of saying that in this situation. Uh, and the cost was 1,086.2. Okay, so in that case, Y is uh, 1,086.12. The question is, what is the predicted cost? Well, the predicted cost is, I'm going to put in, evaluate the equation using Excel. As I had before, it's 500 plus 100 times 5.8. That's the predicted cost. Okay. Uh, and is the point in the scatter plot above or below the line? Because the if, if I look in the data, it, the data point in the uh, scatter plot, it has a height of 1,086, that's above the predicted value, which is gonna be along that orange line, so it's above. Let's look at this next one. 
uh, what if I have uh, they complete eight bikes and 20% of a ninth bike, so 8.2, uh, that's the number of bikes, and the cost is 1278.96. What is the predicted cost? Well, that's, again, it's going to be equals uh, 500 plus 100 times 8.2. That's the predicted cost, but it only costs $1,278.96. That is going to be below the line. So if the actual is less than the predicted, then the point is going to be below the line. Sound good? OK, here I've got what I've actually got here is um, I'm just going to show you some examples of what scatter plots will look like for different amounts of correlation. I'm actually going to be able to vary the correlation, and it will generate a scatter plot with data points that are going to range from around 0 to 100 for both x and y. Uh, and so when you have no correlation at all, this is roughly what it's going to look like. There should be pretty much, there's just a lot of variation in your Y value that doesn't have any sort of, uh, uh, doesn't have any sort of dependence on what the X value is, right? As I increase the correlation, correlation, as, as you know, it's, it's a value that, that measures how linearly related the two variables are. It can range from negative one to positive one. So if I go to point two, this is what a correlation of point two would look like. You can see that there is a trend, and I'm showing the trend line in there, um, but it's, it's, it's pretty, um, it's, it's, uh, it's not very steep of a slope. And there's a lot of variation around the line, not a lot of uh, it's not really tight around that line. Let's go up to 0.5 and see what that would look like. Okay, it's even, it, it, it's, there's more variation around the line, but you can see a lot of the points actually cluster pretty close to the line. Let's go to 0.65. Um, so the, the, the slope is more apparent here. And, uh, and as I increase this 0.75, uh, the, the points are, are, again, there's, there's variation around the curve, but a lot of them are clustering pretty close to that line. That's at 0 0.75, 0 0.85. Now it's, there's less variation. The variation is, is not as far away from the line. And finally, um, I'll go up to 0 0.95. You can see it's really, really tight. Um, the, the, I'm going to go to 0 0.99, and you'll see this is, there's still some variation, but it, it's really close. And if I, you can actually do a very, uh, correlation of exactly one. That's going to be a perfect two perfectly correlated variables, there, there's going to be zero uh, uh, variation around the line. It's all, they're all going to be along that line. This is what a positive correlation looks like. I'll look at the negative correlation. So negative 0.25, uh, uh, you have a downward slope, right? Negative correlation of negative, let's do negative 0.65. You can see you've got this this downward slope. I think one of the things that's not apparent is the, is some of the points that are actually off the chart that you're not seeing. Um, some of the y values are above 100 and below um, zero, but those those are off the off the graph. Um, just for <laughs> I just wanted to crop the window so that the the axes don't continuously change. Um, uh, and the other thing that this is something that's covered in the text is whether or not it's weak or strong, you can just use this rule of thumb. If the correlation in absolute value terms is from zero to 0.4, that's considered weak. And if the correlations in absolute value is between 0.4 and 0.8, that's considered moderate. And above 0.8 is considered strong. Uh, and R squared is uh, when you take the correlation and you square it, you're going to get a statistic we call the correlation, uh, sorry, the coefficient of determination. Uh, and so you can see the cor corresponding values of R squared. If R squared is less than 0.16, that's 0.4 squared. Uh, that's considered weak. Between 0.16 and 0.64, that that's, uh, corresponds to the range of uh, R between 0.4 and 0.8. That's considered moderate. And then above 0.64 is considered very strong. All right, here we have two variables, x and y, and I want to calculate the correlation coefficient for the two variables. There's a function in Excel that does this. It's very easy to use. It's the cor Corel function, C-O-R-R-E-L. Um, you type in 
equals Corel parenthesis and you select the first variable, doesn't matter which one is first, comma, the second variable. So we're selecting the whole uh, range uh, of numbers, close the parenthesis and calculate your correlation. The correlation is 0 0.59066. How would I interpret this? Well, this is, it's, um, you know, this is, uh, Point, it's this is this is between point four and point eight, so this is a moderate uh, moderate relationship. It's moderately strong. Move that down a bit. Let's find the regression equation and pr try to predict y for predicting y hat. So uh, as we've done before, we can get the slope. That's using the slope function, s l o p e select the y's, now it's important that you do y first and then you do the x's second. It, it will give you a different, totally different number if you do it the other way. That's, your, um, that's my slope and my intercept. I'll do that next, equals I-N-T-E-R-C-E-P-T, parenthesis, again, my select my y's and I comma select my x's. That's my intercept, that's my slope. Y hat equals 21.475, I'm gonna to round to three decimal places, plus 0.606x. That's my regression equation for predicting Y hat. And to interpret, uh, let's find the, oh, let's see, find and interpret the coefficient of determination. So the coefficient of determination, you can do it a couple ways. You can do, I can just take um, Corel, I can take the correlation of the two variables, this one, comma, this other column of data, and oops, I didn't want to do that. I wanted to, I wanted to square that. That's my R squared. The other way you can do it is RSQ, the RSQ function, and just calculate. It says to select the Y's and then the X's, although it's gonna be the same whether you select it in either order. Um, that's also the correlation, that's the coefficient of determination. We could also actually, uh, I could just take the correlation I already calculated and square that number. You can even find it in more complicated ways. You can do a linear regression in Excel, but I'm not gonna do that. This is all I really need. I just wanted to use these functions. Uh, and let's interpret it well. As I said, um, uh, because uh, zero, because, uh, oh, let's put it, it's the bounds that I have. It's between 0 0.348879. It's between 0.16 and 0.64. So uh, this is a moderate, um, positive relationship or the moderate relationship. Another way of interpreting it, the specifically the interpretation that we can give is um, if we change the correlation, co uh, the, the coefficient of determination, uh, please pardon me, the coefficient of determination and put it, express it as a, print, as a percent, I'll add a couple of decimal places. I could say 34.88, um, eight, <laughs> percent of the variation of y is explainable by the variation of x. This is the, uh, the kind of classical interpretation of the coefficient of determination. So 34.88% of the, the variation of y. So as y varies, y has lots of different values, it varies a lot. Part of that variation is ex explainable by the value of x. Part of it is attributable to other factors, randomness, other variables that I'm not looking at, whatever they may be. So the coefficient of determination is what proportion of the variation in y is explainable by x. Coefficient of determination is not what percentage of the data points will lie along the line. That's not what it means. <laughs> A lot of people say that, that's not true. Uh, that's, uh, chances are you're not gonna have any data points lying on the line exactly, but that doesn't mean that your, correlate, that your coefficient of determination is zero. It's what percentage 
of, or what proportion of the variation in y can be explained by the variation in x, or can be explained by your linear model. You can say it in different ways. Well, that's all I wanted to cover right now. I hope this is going to be helpful for you, and I will uh, see you later. Bye.